Let's start working on our expense tracker project. And in this lecture, we are going to read the form data from the UI and we are going to store it in some variable. And then we will create a class using which we will create an expense object. So let's go to VS Code. And here we have our application. I'm calling it track it. And this is the HTML for that. And I have removed all the code from app.ts because we are going to write it again. So in the index.html, in the UI, we are displaying this form where we have this select list from where the user can select the expense type like credit and debit. He can enter a description for the expense and he can enter the amount. And when this add expense button is clicked, it should add a new item in the expense list. And that we will do later in the next lecture. In this lecture, what we want is, first of all, we want to get access to all these four elements and we want to store it in a variable for that if i scroll down here we have that form in that form first we have this select list with the id expense type then we have this input element with the id description and we have another input element with the id amount and we have this button with this class name add expense button so using these IDs and classes of these HTML elements, we are going to access it from our TypeScript code. So let's go ahead and let's write the logic for that. So let's first go ahead and let's create a variable. Let's call it expense type. I'll call it as exp type. And here we want to get access to this select list. For that, I'm going to use document.getElementById method because for this select list we have specified this id expense type let me copy this id and here let's pass that id okay now what i'm also going to do here is here we are using this get element by id method and we are passing an id so typescript does not know which type of element we are going to get from this expression whether it will be an input element a button element or a paragraph etc so typescript does not know about that and if we don't have any element with this ID in our HTML in the DOM, in that case also, this expression will return null. But we know, we as a developer know that in the HTML document, we have a select list with that ID. So this expression here is not going to return null. And to tell TypeScript that here, we are going to use this exclamation. And also we know that this expression here is going to return us a select list. So here we are going to typecast the HTML element, which this expression will return. So currently it is going to return an HTML element, but we are going to tell TypeScript explicitly that it is not going to return any HTML element. It is going to return a HTML select element. So here we are going to typecast it. And we have learned that there are two ways to typecast a value. We can use angle brackets before it. And in that we can specify the type or we can also use as after the expression and we can specify the type. So here the type is going to be HTML select element. In the same way, let's create another variable. Let's call it description or maybe let's call it expense description. And again, I'm going to access this description input element using its id so again let's use document dot get element by id and there let's pass the id of this description text box so for that the id is desc and again we know that this expression is not going to return us null because we have an input element with this id so that we will tell typescript by using this exclamation and here also we are going to typecast it because we know that this expression will return us an input element. So here we are going to tell TypeScript that it has to type this HTML element to HTML input element. Okay, in the same way, let me copy this line and let's paste it here and let's call it expense amount. And here we are going to get access to this amount input element. For that, the ID is amount. Let's copy that ID. Let's specify it here. And this is also going to return us an HTML element. And we want to convert that HTML element to HTML input element. So we are typecasting it here. And finally, let's also get access to this add expense button element. 
so let's create a variable add expense button you can name it anything and here on this button we do not have an id instead we have a class so using this class we are going to access this button element for that here instead of get element by id method on the document object we are going to use query selector method and to that we are going to pass the class name of that button and since we are using the class name we need to specify dot before the class name so that this query selector will select an html element based on class name okay and again we know that we are going to receive this button element because we have a button in html with this class so that we will tell typescript by using this exclamation and we will also typecast it to html button element all right now we are going to create a class and using that class we are going to create expense objects so for creating a class we are going to use class keyword and we are going to call it as expense in this expense class first of all i am going to have an id property and it is going to be of type number okay and here let me make this id property as static and initially i'll assign it with the value zero then i want to have the expense type property so i'll simply call it as type and the type for this type property is going to be either credit or debit okay so here we are using literal type okay here we are telling that this type property can only store these two values either credit or debit and by default let's assign it with the value debit so if the user does not select anything from this drop down by default we will set its value to debit then we are going to create the description property which is again going to be of type string and initially let's assign it with the value empty string and finally let's also specify a property amount this is going to be of type number and initially let's assign it with the value zero all right now let's create a constructor in this constructor we are going to receive three parameters the first parameter will be type of type credit union debit the second parameter will be description so i'll simply call it as desc and it is going to be of type string and the third parameter will be amount and this is going to be of type number okay and inside this constructor we are going to set the value for these properties so here we'll say this dot type equals type this dot description equals description and this dot amount equals amount okay and here instead of creating this id as static let me remove this static keyword from there let's keep this id also as instance property and we will use it later for updating and deleting the expense but for now let's keep it like that i'm not going to initialize it here so now every time we will create an instance there the id will always be zero or what we will do is let's actually create a static property and let's call it maybe current id it is also going to be of type number and let's set it to zero and in here let's set this dot id equals plus plus expense dot current id so whenever we will create an instance of this expense class there we will increment the value of this static property so for the first time when we will instantiate it it will be zero so we are incrementing its value to one and one will be assigned to id second time when we will create an instance of this expense at that time the current id will be one this id will be zero and when the constructor is called we are setting this dot id to plus plus expense dot current id so the current value will be one it, it will be incremented to two and that will be assigned to this id all right so in this way we have accessed all these form elements we have created a class for creating an instance of expense type now on this button element let's go ahead and let's add an event listener for that here let's say 
add expense button dot add event listener and here we want to listen to click event okay and when the click event happens we want to call a function a callback function so here i'm using the anonymous function syntax and in there for now we are simply going to create an instance of this expense class so for that let's create a variable let's call it expense equals new expense okay and when we are calling the constructor of this expense class there we need to pass the value for type description and amount so for the type let's pass credit for the description let's pass test and for the amount let's pass thousand and let's simply go ahead and let's log this expense object in the console let's save the changes let's open developer console let me clear everything here now we need to compile this code and for that let's go ahead and let's open vs code built-in terminal okay and here we are going to compile this code by running tsc space hyphen w so i want to compile this code in watch mode for that i'm using this tsc command and to compile it in watch mode i'm using hyphen w let's press enter and it should compile this code so we don't have any error and the application has compiled this typescript code has compiled okay so now if i click on this add expense button you will see something is getting logged but then it immediately disappears now why is that that's because we are using this button element inside a form and when we use a button element inside a form that button acts as a submit button basically it submits the form whenever it is clicked and that's what is happening here and whenever a form gets submitted it makes a new http request to the server and it reloads the complete application so basically it restarts the whole application whenever the form gets submitted and that's why you will see that whenever i'm clicking on this button this refresh icon spins just notice that so what we want is we want to prevent this default behavior and to prevent this default behavior whenever this click event will happen this callback function it will receive the event object so let's specify that and on that event object we have a method called prevent default which will prevent the default behavior of button and what is the default behavior of the button in a form it basically submits the form and makes a new request to the server so we are preventing that default behavior with this let's save the changes and now when i click on this add expense button you will see that an object an instance of this expense class has been logged here in there we have this amount we have description as test we have id as one and type as credit and you see the id here is one now let me go ahead and let me create one more instance or maybe let's create three instances let's call it expense one expense two and expense three and let's log expense one expense two and expense three let's save the changes let's click on this add expense button so three expenses has been logged and for each expense you see the id one two and three so the id is incremented as expected all right let's remove these two instances and let's also call it as exp let's remove these two and let's rename this expense as exp all right so in this lecture we accessed the form elements and the button element in the form we created an expense class and we have tested the click event on this button and in the callback function of that click event we are creating an expense object and we are logging it but here we are not going to pass any dummy data like we are doing here instead we want to read the data from these form elements and we want to pass that data to this expense constructor in order to create an expense object so for that first we need to pass the value for this type and type can only be credit or debit so here let me create a variable i'll call it as type okay and here we will check so 
here we are accessing this expense type element we are going to get the value from that type so here we will say expense type dot value so this value will be the value which the user has selected from this drop down okay so if it is equal to credit then we will return credit otherwise we will return debit because if you notice this type is only going to expect two values either credit or debit it is not going to accept any other value so we need to do this check before assigning this type value to this parameter if i don't do that if i simply say exp type dot value you see we have an error and what does this error says it says argument of type string is not assignable to type parameter of type credit or debit so we cannot use it like this that's why i am creating a variable and that variable will have either a value credit or debit based on what value we have selected in the expense type drop down and that we will assign to this type variable and that we will pass as first argument then for the second argument we are going to read the value from this input element we are accessing this input element and storing it inside this expense description variable so here let's say expense description and from that input element from this expense description input element we want to access the value and in the same way we also have this variable expense amount which is storing this amount input element so from there we want to access the value which the user has entered in that let's save the changes and now let's go ahead and let's create some expense objects let's say test one enter amount maybe thousand let's click on this and you will see that an expense object has been created and it has been logged here let's create a debit expense let's call it test 2 and let's say amount is 200 let's click on this add expense another expense object has been logged where the id is 2 amount is 200 and description is test 2 so in this way we are able to read the value from these form elements whenever this button is getting clicked okay now what i want is instead of logging it in the developer console we want to display these objects the value of these objects in the ui let's do that in our next lecture and here i can see that we have an error and it says argument of type string is not assignable to type parameter that's because here since we have not specified a type and we are returning a string value its type is considered as string but here let's explicitly specify its type as credit or debit okay and now we have an error here because this value also since we are reading it from the ui it is going to be a string value so let's explicitly convert that string value to number value so there we are entering a numeric value in this amount field but when we are reading it it is read as a string value so let's use plus before it to convert it to a number okay and all those compile time errors are gone and this is the benefit we get from typescript you see whenever the type does not match it immediately gives us a compile time error and allows us to fix the issues and this is the advantage of using typescript over javascript typescript helps us avoid any type of bug which we might introduce in our application when we use plain javascript all right so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day